Well, sometimes I, I look back and I, I just wonder, what were we thinking? What was I thinking? We went for a long, long period of time with no resources. And when I mean no resources, I mean no resources. People told us we were crazy to go all in. You know, is this really going to work? I think some of the most beautiful things can emerge through trial and through difficult times. I had been a physician for a long period of time, and I'd had a patient who came to see me, and they would ask me, Dr. Hill, what do you think about the essential oils? And I made the mistake one time of saying, I think that's one of the craziest things I've ever <laughs> heard. She looked me right in the eye and she said, I am so disappointed to hear that because that's done more for me than you or any of your colleagues or anyone has ever done for me. And it intrigued me. And over time, I became more intrigued. I became involved with essential oils. And now for the last several decades, this is all that I have focused on and all that I have done. I remember when I first came into the essential oil industry, I thought they were voodoo oils. I thought they were really, really strange. It wasn't long before I started using oils on my kids, and I was amazed at what I was able to do and how it empowered me as a mom to take charge of my family's health care. So I was a huge skeptic. Parents were educators. My father was a professor of physics. So I just wasn't raised with anything but allopathic Western medicine. I learned over the years how effective they, they were and can be, especially if they're pure. After working 10 years in the essential oil industry, I found myself leaving uh, for integrity purposes because I knew that essential oils had to be pure. The desire of my heart was just to go home and raise my children. And I hadn't been home very long before my husband came to me and said, there's something more you're supposed to do. And as he said this to me, I actually was very angry with him because my heart said, I want to be home with my kids. And he said, sweetheart, you're not listening. There is something you're supposed to do with Dave and Dr. Hill with these oils. And I said, what do you mean these oils? I've tried all the essential oils out there. There's nothing that meets the quality standards our family needs to use for our health care. And he smiled at me and he said, I know, you're supposed to find them. Stop thinking with your head and start thinking with your heart. And it was in that moment that I knew. It all came together and I had such a grand vision of going out and finding the world's most pure, most potent essential oils and educating mothers like me how to take charge of their health care. So it was in that moment before fear took over that I picked up the phone and I called Dave. And Emily Wright called me at the time and just said, What if we could go out and source the most pure essential oils on the planet and bring them to the world in a mainstream fashion? And he got really emotional. And Dave doesn't get emotional. And actually it was that right then and there, that was the genesis. Uh, for me, and I, I just kind of felt strongly like, yeah, we're going to start a company. So I hung up the phone with Dave, I picked up the phone, and I called Dr. Hill. And as I called him, I still remember he kind of giggled. And I said, Doc, this isn't funny. I, I'm, I'm serious about this. What if we could go out and find these pure oils like we've always wanted to do? And what if we could educate people to really understand the power behind these oils? And he said, no, Emily, I'm not laughing because I think your idea is crazy. I'm laughing because I was just getting ready to call you and ask you the very same question. It started with an initial little small meeting in an Italian restaurant. In the far corner. And we met for five and a half hours until they finally kicked us out of the restaurant because we weren't buying food anymore. And we just started to dream. We would meet anywhere we could find some space to meet. And it was in some strange places. Of course, the, the basement of the Orma Library was one. We got too rambunctious and they finally kicked us out of the library. Sometimes it was in the basement of our homes. I remember not telling my kids, you know, that I was unemployed and starting a new thing, but the dad was working on a project in the basement. 
As I did the business plan, I started to realize that this was going to be big. I just knew that with such a good team and product that had changed our lives, we felt like this was going to be significant. So as we began in the spring of 2008, that's when we had a massive falling out with the housing market in the United States. And there was a lot of panic and a, and a lot of fear. We looked at starting this company, the first thing you think is, uh, I gotta raise money, I've gotta get capital. And we, we set out to do that initially, and uh, actually ended up, the four of us, back in New York City, visiting with some very high profile people. And as we gather together that next morning at that conference table, and we've got, you know, all of these Manhattan style managers that are meeting with us, and they quizzed us for hours. Finally, at the end of the day, they looked at us and they said, we believe that your business model is going to work. We believe that you will be successful and we want to fund your venture. We'll give you $5 million. And we are all, of course, felt extremely elated. They were willing to fund the company, but of course they, they were interested in 51% uh, and control. And I just remember the feeling we had as we walked away from that conference table. And the four of us found ourselves in front of the Statue of Liberty. And I remember looking across the water. Almost as if on cue, as I recall, we all just grew somewhat silent. And as we looked out over the water, and I looked at the Statue of Liberty, what rung true to me is, we're doing this to give people freedom. And if we take their money, we can't make people free. And we can't make this dream that we have a reality because they'll never allow us to bring the quality of essential oils that we know we have to have to light because they'll be looking for an exit strategy. They'll be looking for a return on their investment. And that can't be part of the equation. I remember standing right next to Dave Sterling and Dave looked at me and then kind of a somewhat shocking way. He asked me, how much money do you have, Doc? And I said, I, I don't know. And he said, how much can you pull together? And I said, I don't know. And he asked each one of us in succession, and before we left the park that afternoon, uh, we had made the decision that we were unable to take any resources from anybody, and instead, we would all leverage everything we have. We took the equity out of our homes. We cashed out 401ks. We liquidated everything we owned in order for this dream to come to fruition. And so as I expressed this to my wife, I, I remember very clearly, she just looked at me and said, well, I trust you. You'll take care of us and we'll be fine. And we had family members even come to us to say, you're foolish. Your family is going to be homeless. So we went all in, everything. We didn't hold anything back. We thought it would be for just a couple of months that we went without any income, but it was 13 months. And those final months, I mean, we're eating almonds and yogurt and <laughs> telling our kids they can't go to dance practice and they can't play sports because we don't have enough money. But having that belief that it was all going to be worth it, and I remember a day that we had $5,000 left in our account. $5,000 because we had just put together this big oil order. And we didn't know how we were gonna make payroll. We didn't know how we were gonna make commissions. And just to see how doors open every single time, as long as we continued to step forward, that doors open. People ask me sometimes, you know, how, how were you guys able to do what you did? And, uh, you know, but everybody rolled their sleeves up and we did every job. We did this job, this job, this job. I was supposed to go out and find these precious oils. So I started calling people. And every single person would say, of course, our oils are 100% pure. And that's when I realized almost all essential oils that are sold out there are sold through brokers. That these brokers were very smart people, often having very sophisticated labs. And the oils were almost always changed. 
Most were not pure. Most were synthetically created. I had probably a hundred plus different samples that had been sent to my home. And every time we would meet, you know, Dave, Dr. Hill would say, Emily, have you, have you found the oils yet? I'd have to say, not yet. Like, are we going down the right path? Is this really what we're supposed to do? And I remember one beautiful day, I opened up my doorstep and five oils showed up all on the same day. It was frankincense, lavender, tea tree, lemon, and peppermint. As I smelled these bottles, I called up Dave and I called up Dr. Hill and I said, I found the oils. They said, don't you dare open them until we're all together. We knew that these oils were absolutely pure and it gave us just enough confidence, just enough faith to continue stepping forward. I remember that first discussion we had. We talked about the culture of the company. What type of soul do we want doTERRA to have? And we realized that these oils are experiential. And we realized it had to be a person-to-person -person model. We had to bring people together. We've got to have a culture of giving back. We have to have a culture of caring. Locking arms with the people who are putting the seeds in the ground, who are harvesting these products. It's making sure that their needs are met. As I look back on it today with doTERRA, it's, uh, it's, it's overwhelming to me to see the impact it is around the world. There was a lot of sacrifice, but again, those are days we look back on, um, you know, with some pride. Sacrifice is a really important piece in setting the foundation. Today, we've empowered nearly 8 million families all around the globe. We're now filling 315,000 bottles of oil every single day. And just to think about it on that scale just warms my heart knowing that every single bottle is changing somebody's life on both sides of the bottle. I think this work has such purpose. It's like, how, how can we stop? We have single-handedly changed the acceptance of essential oils in science and in medicine. We are so committed to this work. We are so humbled to be stewards of what nature has created so perfectly for us. And we're so grateful for all of our amazing employees, for all of our amazing wellness advocates, for all of our amazing customers all around the world. We haven't changed in our mission. We haven't changed in our purpose. We're still true to those things that very early on were important. If doing the right thing was important then, doing the right thing is important now. If helping and giving service to other people was important then, it's important now. If sourcing oils differently and doing what had not been done before was important then, it's important now. We feel like as crazy as it sounds, we're still just beginning.